Well, God bless all of you as you are joining us tonight for this powerful broadcast. My name is Prophet Charlie Champ. I am the co-founder of Destiny Encounters International, along with my wife, Bryn Champ. You can find out more about us at www.destinyencounters.com. Listen, tonight we're going to have a very powerful time in the presence of the Lord during this teaching. We're talking about restoration and recovery of lost years. If you're watching me on Facebook or YouTube, uh, please let me know where you're watching from, what state, maybe what country you are tuned in from. And listen, if you are on YouTube, please consider subscribing to our channel. It would be a tremendous blessing. We are always putting out fresh content, and we know that you will be very, very blessed. You guys, we just got back from a very uh, fruitful time in the nation of Nepal, and in the coming weeks, I'll be sharing more about that crusade, but we can tell you that almost 15,000 people were born again by the Spirit of God during those four days of crusade evangelism. Many miracles, deliverances, the power of God was just shaking that region with his glory, and we know that there are going to be several, several testimonies coming in throughout the next several months. So we are just holding off a little bit before we start to tell you all of the things and start to release the videos of um, the numerous miracles that took place during that time. But I wanted to mention that we have another crusade coming up in August, and I want to invite uh, many of you to come along with us. We're going to the nation of Uganda, where we're estimating there's going to be 100 to 150,000 people a night in, in this crusade. And you can be a part of our team. You could come along with us. You can uh, come and be a part of what God is doing through the ministry of Destiny Encounters International in shaking the nations for the kingdom of heaven. If you want more information on that, you just have to get onto our website, destinyencounters.com, go under the mission tab. You're going to find an application there. Please pray about coming with us. Some of um, our, um, our last crusade in Nepal, many of them were brand new, had never come on a trip with us before, and their lives were transformed and changed. If you have a calling, you have a destiny, and you really want to get activated in the supernatural, these trips overseas are for you. So I want to encourage you, come along with us, be a part of it, and it will change your life. Also, in the month of May, we get to announce um, our latest intensive. We've been doing these intensives uh, for ministers and leaders and a lay leaders, people that are serious about uh, moving in the supernatural in their local churches. They're, they need um, you need building up. You you need a touch from the Holy Ghost. We've been doing these intensives uh, where we've been in opening this space here at the headquarters for 200 students to come in for a weekend and uh, get encouraged get edified, get built up, uh, get impartation from generals of the Spirit. And this coming May, we have a very incredible intensive called The Revivalist. And we have um, two special guests that are going to be coming in uh, to help alongside Bryn and myself to minister to you uh, one of my favorite generals and someone that I've gleaned um, a, a lot over the years and just been so blessed to be con uh, connected with this particular ministry, Mahesh Shavda, Papa Mahesh will be coming in. He is a signs and wonders, miracle worker, a glory carrier, and has shaken nations uh, for decades, connected with Derek Prince, Crusade evangelism, 
uh, signs and wonders in the nations. He's going to be coming in and ministering for us alongside Ross Johnson. If you do not know who Ross Johnson is, my goodness, you need to look this guy up. He is burning with the fire of God. He is shaking, along with some of his friends, the state of California, and now they're moving into other states. They've been doing open-air meetings and uh, going into high schools. I've, I've watched videos of Ross. He's going into high schools, and people are getting set free, delivered. Kids are coming to the Lord. And so he's going to be coming in and ministering alongside myself and Bryn. And we are going to be uh, ministering on the subject of the revivalist uh, and talking about crusade evangelism. We're going to be talking about uh, street evangelism. We're going to be talking about open air meetings, moving in miracle ministry. So if this is your desire... This is something that you have wanted uh, to be activated in. This week, that weekend is going to be the weekend that you want to be here. Details are on the website. It's in the month of May. Don't miss it. Listen, space is limited. I'm only taking 200 students. So you're going to want to sign up today. So get on the website, sign up, be a part of this intensive. I'm telling you, it's going to be powerful. If, it was, if it's anything like our last two we've had, my goodness, the, the altars um, intensive as well as our pioneers intensive was just power packed with revelation, impartation, and people were coming from all over the world to be a part of what God is doing. And so you can sign up, be a part of that particular intensive. And you say, well, Brother Charlie, I'm not in full-time ministry. Listen, it's not about being in full-time ministry. It's about having a hunger and desire to see your destiny, your calling, and your purpose fulfilled and what God is intended for you. So if you have a desire to move in the gifts of the Spirit, you have a desire to see your region, your city, uh, nations of the earth shaken by the power of the Lord. Please consider coming to this intensive. I believe it will greatly benefit you. Every On the Saturday night, we clear out all the chairs. We do an impartation time, and some of those impartation times last for hours. People just pin to the ground, the Spirit of the Lord touching them in, a, in just an amazing way. And so uh, I hope to see you uh, there for that in, in intensive, I know God's going to impact you in a powerful way. And listen, it doesn't matter what nation you're coming from. Uh, sign up, make your reservation. Come from another country, let us know. We'll help you. You say, well, Brother Charlie, I can't come in person. Is there another way that I can watch online? Yes. If you are a Destiny Encounters partner, you're a monthly partner. You get access to all of our intensives as well as our meetings that we don't put online. We have an academy, a legacy academy, with hundreds of hours on various subjects. And so our last two intensives were, are on there as well as this one will be on there. So if you're not able to make it in person but you want to get that um, revelation, you want to get activated in those things, you can sign up to become a partner, and you can get all those uh, video streams, and they are readily available to you. Well, let's jump into the Word tonight. We're talking about restoration and recovery of lost years. Restoration and recovery of lost years is something that the Lord has been stirring in my spirit, and I believe this is a season uh, that you're going to recover all. When God called the light day in Genesis... In the darkness night, it was more than just a naming ceremony or a simple division of time. It was a profound declaration of a spiritual state and condition. Now, I want you to hear me tonight because day represents illumination, understanding, and enlightenment. It's when things are clear and visible. The light is the presence of God, the manifestation of truth and knowledge. Night, on the other hand, symbolizes confusion, ignorance, and times of trouble. It's when uh, visibility is low and things are unclear. The darkness 
is perceived as the absence of God's illumination. Oh, you're going to get something tonight out of this. It's going to transform your life. No matter the time on the clock, until light breaks forth, it will always be night. Understand this, that external circumstances such as physical time on a clock do not dictate our spiritual state. Even if it's daytime on the clock, if we're in a state of confusion or lack of knowledge, it is still night for us spiritually. The true day or light breaks forth when we receive enlightenment, understanding, and the presence of God in our life. This shifts us from spiritual night into spiritual day. God is taking you from spiritual night into spiritual day. He's taking you from confusion, misunderstanding, and he's bringing you into illumination and revelation in the mighty name of Jesus. Tonight is your night to come into the day of the Lord. Now, the Bible tells us, if you have your Bible, and I hope you do, my goodness, I hope that you are paper Bible saved, and uh, you don't just have your Bible on your phone. Turn with me to Joel chapter 2, verse 25. I want to I I take you to Joel chapter 2, verse 25. I just want to read a portion of Joel chapter 2, verse 25. It says, then... I will make up to you the years, the years, time that the swarming locusts have eaten. I want you to underline the word years because God will not just restore things, but God will restore time. The time that you've lost, God will restore. See, sometimes when we're thinking of restoration, we're just thinking of what the enemy has stolen. The Bible tells us in John that the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. But Christ has come to give us life and life more abundantly. The word life there is a particular word in the Greek. It's the word zoe, which means the life of God. So wherever the enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy, Christ has come to give us the life of God. And the life of God is outside of chronological time. And so God doesn't just restore things that the enemy has taken from us. Oh my goodness. God restores the very time that was lost. Now, I want to show you just uh, as an example here tonight that while uh, there can be uh, a a hold up, a hold up on what God has destined for you to have, restoration will come to you And you won't just begin to progress again, but you will find yourself right where you are supposed to be in the kairos moments of God. In other words, when the enemy comes, and watch this, he comes and and this is the, the wall, the spiritual wall that the enemy creates. And here you are, and he's delaying you from moving forward, yet time is still going on. But you are delayed. Now, if that is removed, watch this. When that's removed, see, you can continue to progress. But listen, time has already moved. So restoration is not necessarily just the removal of the delay, but it is the full uh, manifestation of where you 
should be. And God begins to bend time. Now, I will use this uh, offering envelope as an example. See, you're right here. Your miracle's right here. As you come into the realm of eternity, see, time begins to bend. So where the enemy had you delayed here and your miracle was here, and all of this time, this chronological time is here, in the eternal realm, God will just boom. He'll just make it up to you. Oh, I feel the Spirit of God right now. And so you're, you, you're, you're here, and now your miracle's here, and as you rise into eternity, boom, they meet. That's called the, the kairos moments of God. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 14, 16, and 17, wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Wherever light is, the power of darkness cannot stay. And Paul said this, redeeming the time, because the days are evil, wherefore be ye wise and understand what the will of the Lord is. The will of the Lord for you is to see the Zoe power of Christ manifest in your life. And when you're asleep, the enemy has the ability to steal, kill, and destroy from you. But when Christ begins to come, time begins to be redeemed. And all that the enemy has done in the days that are evil, God can begin to redeem them and bring a revelation of his Zoe. How does he do that? Well, John chapter 6 Verse 63 says, It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profits nothing. In other words, living in the spirit will always give you access to the day of the Lord. And when we are walking in the flesh, it will profit us nothing. In other words, it doesn't matter how hard we try. It doesn't matter how much human intellect we have. Without the move of the spirit we will stay in a stagnated state and we can only get the benefits of what natural humans can get, which in other words, when we look at the book of Genesis, is the toiling and the sweating of the brow. But the Lord removes that in the, his day. Oh my goodness. And the Bible tells us that the word that I speak, Christ speaks to you, they are spirit and they are life. So, so there's a spirit life that the Lord has given us access to. Remember when Jesus, or, or when the Spirit of God began to hover over the waters, it was darkness, it was void, there was nothing happening, and the Spirit of the Lord spoke, and he said, let there be light. The moment that the light began to break forth, all of the delay was removed, but restoration was instantaneous. Oh my goodness, come on somebody. Not only was the delay removed and progress began to happen, but restoration began to move at an eternal rate. Oh, somebody needs to type in life right now. We need to just stop right now. And I just decree and declare that you're coming into the life of God. That everything that the enemy has stolen from you, God is restoring the years. Some of you have felt like you've, you've wasted 10 years of your life, but I decree and declare in the next 10 days, God is going to restore 10 years of toil and 10 years of delay, 10 years of, uh, uh, of the enemies uh, battering and breaking you and trying to stop you from pushing forward. I decree and declare that there's a breakthrough that is going to happen for you in the next 10 days. Somebody needs to type in 10 right now. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, because God is breaking you through into the power 
of the Zoe of the, of God. Now, I want you to hear me because life, watch this, life in your spirit is salvation. And many of you that are on the broadcast are born again and your spirit is saved. But life in your soul is deliverance. This is why renewal of the mind to the word of God is so very vitally important. Because your soul gets life through the deliverance of the word. When God speaks a word, the power of deliverance begins to move. And what the enemy has come to destroy God comes through his word to bring life. And there are areas in your mind that you felt like you were losing everything. Someone on the broadcast, you've been losing your memory. You've been losing, uh, and the doctors are telling you that Alzheimer's is starting to set in. I decree and declare the spirit is, uh, 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 that demon of Alzheimer's is being broken now in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare memory loss is being restored now by the power of God where the enemy has tried to steal your memory. I break Take it in the name of Jesus and declare freedom right now. Now, life in your soul is deliverance, and some of you are receiving deliverance right now because the enemy has lied to you. He's told you that you're nothing. You're never going to accomplish anything. You're not going anywhere. Your career is headed nowhere. That business is not going to succeed. I break that lie in the name of Jesus by the word of God. You will prosper. You will be blessed in this season, and life is being injected into you now. If the self-same spirit that resurrected Jesus Christ from the dead lives in you, he's going to quicken your mortal body. Everything in your life is coming alive in this season. It will be fertile and prosper in Jesus' mighty name. So life in your spirit is salvation. Life in your soul is deliverance. Life in your body is healing. And I speak over you right now, healing, manifesting in your physical body wherever there's ailments, wherever there's been a, a demonic harassment in the physical body, I speak life into you now in Jesus' name. So God is an expert at the art of restoration. He will paint a beautiful picture where the enemy comes to mar the vision in your life, God is in the art and is an expert in restoration. Nothing is ever completely lost. Listen to me. Whatever you have lost still exists somewhere, even if it's beyond the realm of sight. This is where God needs to elevate your eyes. He needs to put a fresh anointing upon uh, your spiritual eyes to see out of the circumstance and the situation that you're facing and lift you to a perspective where you can see in the realm of the Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. This is a time where God is going to release His anointing and there will be a force and an effort that will propel you to find that which was lost. Now, Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 4, says, Arise and shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Notice that the word light and glory are uh, simultaneous. They're together because wherever the light of God is, the glory of the Lord is. Wherever light is, the Zoe life of the Lord is. Wherever light is found, the glory of the Lord is found. This is why uh, there can be no contamination in heaven because where the light of the Lord is, there can be no decay, there can be no corruption, there can be uh, no uh, disruptance or disorder or, or 
death or darkness because where the light of the Lord is, the glory of the Lord is, the kabod, the weight of the Lord is, the Shekinah, the, the Shekinah glory is in that place. And the Bible says that you're going to arise and shine. Notice that you're coming up. You're not going down. You're arising and you're shining. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, the gross darkness, the people. But the Lord shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Now, this word cover can also be translated to mean clothing or clothed. Notice this. That darkness is going to clothe the earth. Gross darkness, the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. In other words, there's going to be a distinction upon you because you're a child of God. And, and you know, we, we hear preachers talking about dark days, end times, antichrist, uh, you know, all these things. And when they talk about it, it's just doom and gloom. There's no hope in their message, but I've come to tell you that in Christ there's hope. In Christ in you, the hope of glory coming out of you is a manifestation of light in this hour that many are going to begin to see. And while the earth is clothed in darkness, despite the clothing of deep, gross darkness and sin, the light of the Lord is upon you, and his glory is going to be seen on you. Some of you are going to begin to, to have others walking up to you and saying, my God, there's something on you. What is that that's on you? There's something different about you. There's a distinction about you. And you can, you can boldly tell them, this is the glory of the Lord. This is the glory of the Lord. And I sense in the realm of the Spirit, and I've been tell, talking to those that attend our weekly services here in Moravian Falls, I've been telling them, I'm saying, this is a time to begin to disciple. This is a time to begin to step out and begin to minister to those that are around you because the glory of the Lord is going to be seen. In verse 3, the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of your, of your rising. Kings are going to begin to come to the brightness of your rising. Dignitaries, people in high uh, social statuses. See, it doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter where you've come from. It doesn't matter your upbringing. Be, it doesn't matter your educational uh, uh, background. Let me tell you something. The power of the Lord can come upon you. And of course, we know that the Spirit of Christ is in the earth. Christ lives in us, and the Holy Spirit is also with us. And with that Spirit, the Bible says that there are seven distinctions within that Spirit. And one of them is a Spirit of wisdom and understanding. So God will give you wisdom and understanding beyond education that can come from secular uh, university. God will give you insights into markets. God will give you insights into inventions. God will give you insights into technology. God will give you insights into earthly matters and you will begin to be distinguished by the wisdom and revelation that you carry, the understanding that you have that comes from the the Spirit of Christ who creates all things. And so kings will begin to search you out. They'll begin to look for you. Gentiles, those that are unsaved, will come to your light. They'll come to the illumination. They'll come to the day that you carry. They'll get tired of the clothing of the night and they'll come into the brightness of your light. The Bible tells us that we are a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. You, you, the Bible says that we are a candle that cannot be put under a bush. I'm telling you right now, the Spirit of the Lord is illuminating the many in the body, right? It, 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 with, with answers for situations, br to bring solutions into the earth, where, for eco economic uh, 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 upturning. God is going to begin to 
to give us understanding in markets and, and, and how to administrate like Joseph administrated during the famine. The Lord's going to begin to reveal to those that have been seeking the Lord for solutions and the Holy Spirit is going to begin to reveal that to you. If you receive that, I want you to type in amen right now. Amen, Brother Charlie. That's me. I've been seeking him for solutions and I am going to be one of those Josephs. I'm going to be one of those Daniels. I am going to be one of those that understands the times and the seasons that we're living in. I'm going to be an Issachar uh, uh, generation. I'm going to be one that understands where the earth is at right now, and I am going to begin to bring it into the day of restoration. Hallelujah. Now, verse 4 is something that I want to highlight on for a moment. It says, lift up your eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves together. They come to thee, thy son shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be nursed by your side. In other words, God is going to bring you those that need to be trained and equipped. I believe this is a great time for discipleship. I believe this is a great time uh, for mothers and fathers. And you don't have to have a big platform to be a spiritual a father or a spiritual mother to a younger generation. In fact, I believe that there are older ones that your wisdom is going to be key for the younger generation. And you need to begin to invest in to those that are around you. There are young people that are around you and they can carry on your legacy. And you, But you need to lift up your eyes round about and see. Now, this word lift up is an interesting word. It is uh, the Hebrew word NASA. NASA. In fact, it is actually where uh, the United States space program got um, the word for the organization NASA. So this particular word is a supernatural launching up into another atmosphere. So some of you need to get out of the atmosphere, the environment, the climate that you are currently in because all you see uh, is gross darkness, but you need to lift up your eyes and you need to begin to see. That's what happened in the book of uh, Genesis with Abraham. The Bible says that Abram uh, lifted up his eyes, and that's when he saw he saw the three men walking, and they came to visit his tent. I don't have time to get into that. Oh my goodness! But this is a this is a prophetic. This is a prophetic injection into the spirit eye, and it causes an elevation of vision to look beyond the moment you're in now. In other words, you begin to see time bend and acceleration begin. This is a lifting up, and just I want you to imagine uh, like a rocket ship. You're blasting into another, a complete other atmosphere. Uh, You're going from glory to glory. See, glory moves in dimensions. Anointing moves in levels. Watch this. Glory moves in dimensions. I decree and declare that you're going to another dimension. Oh, my. Somebody needs to type in right now, glory, 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 glory. Somebody needs to type in glory as a point of contact. You're going from glory to glory, another dimension of insight, another dimension of supernatural sight. You say, Brother Charlie, I'm not a seer. I decree and declare the lie of the enemy is broken off of you. God gives to every man a vision. Without vision, you perish. I speak over your spirit. 
spiritual eyes right now, you will see a fresh vision for your life. You will move out of the atmosphere that you're in and you will lift up your eyes round about and see those that are gathering to you. There are those that are coming from afar. Hallelujah. There are those that are coming from afar and, and you're going to see them coming. They are going to come and there is some things that are going to begin to transpire and move on your life. Hallelujah. And you say, well, Brother Charlie, who's coming? I see destiny helpers coming. Oh, my God. Shakandola basite. Destiny helpers are coming to you in the name of Jesus. Destiny. Someone needs to type in destiny helpers right now. Destiny helpers. I'm going to define the four types of destiny helpers right now. You need this. You need this right now because these four types of destiny helpers, I'm going to define them for you so when they come, you won't miss them. Number one, divine connectors. Divine connectors. I hope some of our partners in the broadcast tonight are typing, uh, helping the other ones uh, by typing in some of these notes so that they can, they can get uh, these as we're moving along. But divine connectors are number one. They don't have the power in themselves to help you, but they can connect you to people who can. I'm telling you, d divine connectors are very important. They're not the, the end goal, but there are those that can help you to get to the people who can help you. See, some, so there, there are some that have brilliant ideas, but they just don't have access to the person that can help that business idea move forward. And they're waiting for that moment, but they're missing these divine connectors that are going to move them into their destiny. I remember when I was first starting in ministry, there was a, a man who uh, helped me uh, in, a, in a very amazing way. He probably is watching tonight. He still, he's, he still follows the ministry in all these years later, almost 15 years later. He's still following, and we're grateful for him. But a man out of Minnesota, he worked for an airline company. And at the time, you know, we, we, we were just starting out. Didn't even have money to put, put the, uh, the um, you know, finances on a credit card to fly to other countries. And it was, you know, we were just starting out. I mean, just, I mean, if I told you our budget, you, 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 you know, tonight probably there's somebody online that's going to give more than our budget was in six months. But... Um, we were just starting out and we didn't even have money to fly to these countries that we were believing God to go and minister. And back then, you know, there's nobody that's bringing you in. You're just on your own. Uh, th there might be an invitation to uh, another country, but they say if you can get yourself here, um, then you can minister. But at the time, we didn't even have a credit line. And this man was um, a, a, a divine connector. And God used him in a mighty way, not only through the airline company to get us flights and upgrades where I was flying business class uh, for free, but also uh, he was strategizing and connecting me with different uh, ministers that he knew um, that I had no access to. But because of his influence, he was able to divinely connect me to ministers that I had relationship for, with for many, many years. You need men like that, no matter, or women like that, no matter what, um, what you're called to by God, whether it's to start a business, a career that God has uh, put, put in your spirit uh, to do, or you're going into full-time ministry, you need divine connectors. And this guy for years, for, I mean, for the first like five to six years, helped us in a tremendous way in that, in that and we were flying to different nations in business class. Not just in economy, but the Lord was using him in, 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 through his status at the company um, to get us on these flights, and we were flying 
to the nations of the earth and shaking them for the power of the Lord. And, you know, that was when our budget was very, very small as a ministry. And then also he, he would talk, talk to me about, now oh, I know this ministry, you need to meet this, guy, this minister. And because of his association with them, he was able to connect me with them. You, I decree and declare divine connectors. Then, number two, men of access. These are men of influence and gatekeepers in industries. These are men who can, who can get you to where you need to be. These are men of influence influence and gatekeepers. This is number two, gatekeepers into industry. Some of you are locked out of boardrooms, you're locked out, but these uh, men of access can get you there. Number three, gifted people. They are assets. They make your assignment easy. Oh my goodness. This is really in ministry, I'll tell you what these gifted people are. They're the ministry of helps. And I am grateful for those that God, I prayed every day. I said, God, send me gifted people. Gifted people that have a vision for what we are doing. They are assets and they make your assignment easy. And then number four, burden bearers. Burden bearers. These are four types of destiny helpers. Burden bearers. They love, they love you not for your success or what you are, but who you are. And they remain loyal in the hard times and are committed to ensuring your comfort. Burden bearers and really armor bearers carry the load, and in the difficult times, they stay along with you during the warring times. In the good seasons, they're there, and the war, they're with you. They, they, they're not there because you're successful. They're not there because of what you can give to them. They are there because they love you. I pray that God begins to bring you burden bearers in your life. The, these are people that will help you to see restoration in various areas of your life, and they can cause acceleration, and they will help to bear the load while you are moving forward in what God has called you to do. They remain loyal. There's something uh, that is lacking in the Western culture with loyalty that God is restoring. There is a loyalty that God is going to restore within a company of believers that even during the hard times, they begin to recognize the commitment that they have to see the vision through. And I decree and declare for ministers that are watching tonight, I decree and declare over your life that the Lord is going to bring you some burden bearers, some ones that are going to help to carry the load for you. So let's get into some examples of divine restoration. Number one, the recovery of Saul's uh, 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 of, of Saul's father's lost donkeys, 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 2. R realize that when Saul was on the journey, my goodness, he not only saw the restoration of what was lost, but he entered into his divine destiny. He entered into his divine destiny. It was in that moment where he was helping fulfill the restoration and bringing back the, the lost uh, donkeys of his father that he himself found his divine destiny as a king. Let me prophesy over you tonight that as you are helping others along to recovery, you're going to come into contact with your prophetic destiny. The Bible says that as Saul came uh, looking for those donkeys and went to inquire of a prophet, that the prophet actually began to prophesy about his kingship. I decree and declare over your life that you're coming into kingship, over your business, over your career, in your finances, in, in, in that business idea. God is going to give you a kingship 
and he's going to give you a container of fresh oil in Jesus' mighty name. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 6 says, they retrieved, they retrieved the lost axe head by the word of the prophet. They retrieved the lost axe head by the word of the prophet. Now, I, I was in a meeting. This is why the prophetic is so vitally important. You need to be connected in with a prophetic ministry that is speaking the now word. Ne- when, never disassociate yourself from what God has connected you to to bring you into the fullness of his destiny for you. Remain faithful. Stay steadfast in the word and in the spirit. Connected into a prophetic anointing and you will never fail no matter what season you find yourself in. You will always be in a state of revival. Where there's recession, you will see the power of the Spirit moving and people will come to the rising of what you're carrying. And I remember I was in this meeting in the nation of Australia. And in this meeting, the power of God was moving in a mighty way. I was ministering. And of course, like when, when you're in the office of the prophet, God breaks in on the message. And in the midst of your message, if God breaks in, you begin to flow with what he's doing. And in this meeting, this I was ministering, just preaching the word, and all of a sudden, from the corner of the back part of the room, an angel comes. And I saw this angel, and I stopped in immediately and began to minister to and speak to this angel. And as I was speaking to the angel, the angel held out his hand, and in his hand he had a diamond ring. And I said, what is that ring for? And he said, there's a woman in this meeting who has lost this ring, uh, but uh, I've come to show it to you because there's going, to be a divine, there's going to be a divine recovery of not only the ring, but of her marriage. Remember, remember what I told you earlier. Oh, I feel the power of God right now. Oh, ma, 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 shoo. Whoo, glory, 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 glory. Whatever is lost still exists somewhere, even if it's beyond the realm of sight. Even if it's beyond the realm of sight. Ah, you need to get a hold of that. Because just because you don't see it doesn't mean the prophetic does not see it and cannot locate it. So in the midst of this, uh, the angel shows me the ring. I see the design of it. I see everything. Instantly, the angel's gone. But the word has been delivered. I deliver this word. This woman comes out of her seat, comes running up. Power of God hits her. And um, the next day, she's in her home. Now, she and her husband were separated. She had moved into another location. In a, into an apartment. She'd been living there for, for, for months and months and months. And she's vacuuming the carpet. Now, she'd been vacuuming the carpet in, in her living room for, you know, since she had moved in. But all of a sudden, she heard this, like, sound in the vacuum. She shut the vacuum off, looked to see what it was, and it was her diamond ring manifested in the carpet in her living room. She called her husband, who she was separated from, said, I found my diamond ring. Power of God began to move in in that relationship, brought full restoration. And um, God restored their marriage, restored their ring. So even if it seems like it has vanished, been stolen, or taken, God will cause it to come back. Oh my. 
I even, I'll, I'll say this on a personal note. Um, I was ministering years ago in, in the nation of France and was about to miss my flight and I ran out of the hotel room and I actually forgot my wedding ring. I left it on the counter uh, uh, of the bedside on that table in the hotel room and um I, and i'm i'm driving the 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 driver's taking me there and i realize my ring is gone and there was no time to go back to get it i was going to miss my flight i was like oh my goodness i can't believe i've lost this ring i'm going to have to get a new one and so it really but it really bothered me it really bothered me i flew back home i told Bryn what had happened and I said, but it's really, really, this is just like bothering me. And uh, that next week, I was ministering in California. I was ministering in the, in the state of California. And it was late. I had just flown in. And I was still had this ring on my mind. I was just like, man, you know, like, what the heck? Uh, and the Lord spoke to me and he said, do you not think that I can't restore it? And bring it to where you're at right now. And I said, absolutely, Lord. And he brought up this scripture about how the lost axe had floated. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, call it back. Call it back. So I was there in the room. Pulling out my stuff from my suitcase. And all of a sudden, I hear this, like, like a, almost like a stone hit the bed. I turn around, I look on the bed, and there is my wedding ring. It was like, you know, 12 o'clock at night when this happened. And I immediately freaked out. I started, te I started taking pictures of the ring and, and sent it to, I uh, started texting Bryn. I said, Honey, my ring just manifested on the bed in the hotel. Uh, and I was like, I was so shocked by that manifestation that I actually had to deal with an area of unbelief on what I believed God could do and had to crush that because I was face to face with a supernatural manifestation of God. And, you know, the ring, there it is, it left on the, uh, on the bedside of, uh, of a hotel in France. And here I am all the way in the state of California in another hotel, and boom, it manifests. And so it doesn't matter what has been lost. And I feel like there's some of you that have had jewelry stolen. There have been things that uh, heirlooms that have been taken. And I decree and declare restoration now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of the Lord in the mighty name of the Lord glory 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 I know for some of you that is unbelievable that that could happen but I'm just retreat I'm just telling you a story of something that happened to me personally as well as to another woman and you know I just want to tell you that God will restore. God will bring back. God will cause everything that has been left behind to come back into alignment in Jesus' mighty name. And I still, you know, of course, never <laughs> took that ring off again. My goodness, never take it off. Because I'm like, I'm not leaving the thing again and having to call it back. Uh to another location. But notice, time and space didn't matter. In the area of restoration, God does not uh, have a counseling session with time. He does not have a counseling session uh, with space. He dictates and has dominion over both. 
And when the word of the Lord begins to stir in your heart, and some of you right now are in your home, and you're being stirred by what I'm saying to you right now, and you need to open up your mouth and just start decreeing and declaring under this powerful anointing tonight on this broadcast. My stuff is coming back, and you need to start talking to it. You need to start saying that heirloom, that inheritance, my children, and name them by name, that house that was taken, that was foreclosed on, that car that was repossessed, my business that was closed is coming back in the name of Jesus and it's not just coming back but and I'm not just going to progress in uh, my life but it is coming into full restoration in the name of Jesus so I feel the anointing right now moving through this broadcast you need to stretch out your hand and receive what this word that is being released and coming forth through this broadcast is releasing to you now full restoration in Jesus' mighty name. Type in restoration, restoration, restoration right now as a point of contact. The Lord is restoring your health. He's restoring your wealth. He's restoring your family. He's restoring your career in Jesus' mighty name. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Cobra kash de kiri andala basunda. Oh, mighty God. Mighty God. Mighty God. Mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, 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 glory. Shakaramatoria siandalabandoriata. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The Bible tells us in 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 19 through 25, that there was a resurrection of the Shunammite woman's dead child. Now, realize, we don't have time to go into this story tonight, but the prophet had actually prophesied this child. And the enemy came and killed the baby. But the woman never lost hope because she realized that the word of the Lord had been released concerning this particular child. And though it was dead, there was still a word within the prophet's mouth that could bring resurrection. If the word of the prophet could bring the birthing of the child, the word of the prophet can bring the resurrection of the child. And there are some of you that were spiritually pregnant, with a dream, with a vision, with a purpose. And that child, that vision, that thing has died. But tonight in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare resurrection power. Resurrection power. Resurrection power in the mighty name of Jesus. And I breathe life into that dream. I breathe life into that vision. I breathe life into that situation in Jesus' mighty name. I remember I was on a crusade in the nation of Africa, and there was a young child who was brought under the platform lifeless. the, the, The people were in such a frenzy that this young child got crushed, and I was like, devil, you're not gonna kill this baby in my crusade. We came to bring life. And there, there was the child, a lifeless, on the platform, uh, brought into my hands. And the mother and the father are crying and saying, you have to pray for this baby because it hasn't been breathing for about 15 minutes. It's lifeless. The child is just limp, just, just dead, you know, not even moving. And I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And he said, just breathe on the child. Not breathe into the child, just breathe on the child and in that moment I just did what the spirit of the Lord spoke in my into my spirit and I went I blew on the child and all of a sudden its eyes open and it started to catch its breath the parents looked at the baby I and I handed the baby back and the baby was completely restored completely restored completely restored Oh my goodness, I feel the power of God right now on this broadcast. There is a child, a young child, I'm seeing it, a boy, who uh, is on, it's like, I'm seeing it in the hospital on life support. 
uh, and the power of the Lord is touching this young child right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I see like tubes in its mouth. But uh, 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 and it's been in is in a coma. This I'm seeing this child. It's like uh, uh, around the age, uh, their age, uh, five, five, five years, around five, somewhere around that, like four to six years old. Like almost looks about five years old. I'm seeing it right now in the spirit. on life support, tubes in this young boy's mouth. I decree and declare life into that child. I command resurrection power over that young child in the name of Jesus Christ. Wake up. Wake up right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Wake up. O Pacaro Shunda La Masutinia. Mombare Bifi. I pray for this family right now. Resurrection power for this young child in the name of Jesus. And, and, and I'm seeing this child coming out of a coma, waking up by the power of Jesus Christ. By the power of I, I, the power of Jesus right now, moving through this broadcast, I command that child to open its eyes. I break the spirit of death in the name of Jesus. You foul devil of death. I break your power and your authority and I release healing, restoration, and Zoe life over that child now in Jesus' mighty name. There's, a, there, there, there's someone that's, that's watching the broadcast and this is, this is, this is related to you. That child is going to live and not die. You need to email the ministry the testimony because that child is coming back to life now in Jesus' name. The doctors are going to be baffled by the demonstration of Christ's life-giving spirit into that child's body right now in Jesus' name. Many of you, uh, man, there, there's a child that's being, that is in a coma and God is resurrecting it right now. It's coming out. The child, this boy is coming out of the coma. He's coming out of the coma in the name of Jesus. He's waking up. He's waking up and it's going to be a miracle testimony of God's Zoe life being released in Jesus' mighty name. Others of you are receiving miracles right now. The power of the Lord is touching eyes, kidneys, different ailments. Spirit of death has been resting over someone, someone on the broadcast. You, you have an issue of blood. You, you've been bleeding, for, and God is stopping that blood flow now. In Jesus' mighty name, God is touching hearts right now, valves and uh, hearts in the name of Jesus Christ, stubborn conditions are being healed. Ulcers are leaving right now. Blind eye, a woman with an eye issue. you got glaucoma in the right eye. God's opening your right eye right now. There's another, another individual, a man you can't hear out of your left ear. God's opening your left ear right now by the power of the Lord. God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you in the name of Jesus. I thank you right now. I thank you right now. 
scars are vanishing. There's somebody also can't have, doesn't have feeling on the right side of your face. God's healing you right now by the power of the Lord. There's also someone who's had an issue uh, with a, a, a stroke. You have, uh, you have problems with your right hand. God's healing your right hand right now. In the name of Jesus, receive your miracle. There's also someone that needs a knee replacement in your right knee. God's healing your right knee right now. There's a real flow of miracle healing power being released. You need to receive it right now in Jesus' mighty name, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus right now. There's something about like a... Um, a growth at the um, on the back of the neck. There's a woman that's watching right now. You have a growth on the back of your neck. God's dissolving it right now. There's also a woman who has a, 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 a tumor on the right breast. God's dissolving it right now in the name of Jesus. There's also another woman. You have um, a growth like a gorder right here on the right side of your neck. God's dissolving gorders. He's dissolving tumors. He's dissolving growths right now in the name of Jesus. There's a woman who has a hearing aid in your right ear. Take it out. God's healed you. Father, thank you right now. I take authority over rheumatoid arthritis in Jesus' mighty name. Let the fire of God touch that rheumatoid arthritis. Right now, there's also skin rashes being healed in the name of Jesus. There are... Um, there is a tumor in the stomach. I command that tumor to come out now, uh, to come out of the body. Come out of the body. Come out of the body. Come out of the body now in Jesus' mighty name. And come out of the body in the name of Jesus. There's a woman on here. You're watching the broadcast. You're actually getting delivered. I see that tumor coming out of your body. You're going to throw that thing up right now. Power of God, that devil is coming out in Jesus' mighty name. There's like a tumor and a growth in your stomach. God is causing that thing to come out of you now by the power of Jesus. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Health is being restored. Restoration of health in the name of Jesus. Uh, fatigue is leaving uh, in the name of the Lord right now. Power of God. Power of God, power of God, power of God, power of God, power, power in Jesus' name. Power in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Restoration right now. The power of the Lord is moving on this broadcast. Some of you need to share it. Some of you on Facebook, on YouTube, you need to share this broadcast. Share it, share it, share it on your Instagram. Share it, uh, text it to a friend. Share it here on, on Facebook. Share it somewhere because a miracle is happening for many that are watching. And I decree and declare a financial breakthrough in the name of Jesus on this broadcast in the area of finances, in the area of business right now. Right now, right now, right now, in Jesus' mighty name, in the name of Jesus, I break foreclosures on homes. I take authority over repossessions of cars. I'm seeing a woman, you on here, you have a red car. It's, it's like... Um, uh, I'm seeing like a like a Chevy, Chevy, like a she it's like a Chevy, but it's red, and the uh, it's like you it's going to be repossessed, but God is uh, going to cause uh, you to be able to keep your vehicle, and the and your not going to have it repossessed. The Lord is going to restore your job because you've lost your job and God is restoring your job. You're going to keep that uh, car. It's like a red Chevy uh, Chevrolet. God is going to, you're going to keep that vehicle. Um, they've been trying to repossess it, but God is going to cause restoration. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God. Mighty Lord. Mighty Lord. Mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's also people receiving dental miracles. Restoration in your teeth right now. Restoration in your teeth. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, God. 
Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. In the name of Jesus. Uh, there's also um, a young girl that's watching, and you're pregnant with a child, but they, they haven't found signs of life in the baby, and they want to remove the child. But the Lord is restoring that baby right now. I command that child, wake up now in Jesus' name. You're going to feel that baby kick in your womb. You're going to go back to the doctor, and they're going to say there's life in the womb. I decree and declare it right now in Jesus' name. That child is alive. That child is alive. That child is alive. And I see a destiny on that child like Samuel. In the name of Jesus, power of God, and you're going to feel that baby a kick in Jesus mighty name receive it receive it receive it receive it receive it right now receive it receive it oh my 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 thank you Lord thank you God there's a powerful flow of the anointing of restoration on the broadcast right now receive your miracle receive a touch from heaven receive God's power right now power of God in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Let me give you these, four, these three keys to unlocking restoration. Three keys to unlocking restoration. Very quickly, some of you are weeping. Some of you are being touched. Just go back later on, rewatch the broadcast and get these three keys. The Spirit of the Lord is moving heavily, heavily, heavily on this broadcast right now. But I want to give you these three keys to unlock restoration. Number one, a fervent and desperate pursuit can lead to restoration. That's 1 Samuel 17, 4, 35. I decree and declare a fervency and a desperation on your spirit to continue to pursue in Jesus' name. Number two, insights and understanding of Scripture. Luke 15, verse 8, Psalms 119, 105. There's insight and understanding in the Word of God that is coming to you on restoration. Number three, the prophetic declaration, impartation. That's what's happening right now. There's power uh, in the prophetic and it is a tool for recovery. And right now, God is reconditioning the things that have been broken. He's recommissioning. He's reconditioning and he's recommissioning things that have been broken, things that have been missing, things that have been stolen, things that have been seemingly destroyed by the enemy. And I decree it by the prophetic word, life in Jesus' mighty name, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, my goodness, guys, it's been a powerful broadcast. I want to give you an opportunity to sow into the ministry. Those that are partners of Destiny Encounters, you know that we are on a quest for souls. And when you are partnering with this ministry, we are doing everything possible to do the work of the Lord in the nations of the earth to see souls come to Jesus because I believe that we are in the end times. And if we are in the end times then the most important thing that we can be doing right now is saving souls and populating heaven. And we've just crossed a three million soul mark and we are not stopping. We are not letting up. We are continuing the quest of souls. We just did our first crusade in the nation of Nepal. Almost 15,000 salvations over four days and we are pressing on to Uganda the nation of Uganda, and we believe that hundreds of thousands are going to come to Jesus Christ over those four, over that four days of crusade evangelism in the month of August. But we are passionately pursuing right now after the Lord, and we are asking for help financially to make sure that that crusade can go forth um, and it can be completely paid. And you know, God's been gracious to us. He's, he's seen us through um, the believing 
finances and so many crusades that we've done by the grace of God and the help of partners and businessmen and women that have come alongside the ministry to help, we have been able to continue in this whole winning crusades that we we're doing, and we're not letting up. I'm not stopping. Bryn's not quitting. We're we're going for it, and we've already been to two nations this year. We've been to um, uh, Vietnam, and then we went to um, Nepal, and of course, I'm going to Korea twice this year. We're going to Taiwan coming up in the month of June, August. We are doing this powerful crusade in the nation of Uganda, and we we need your help. We 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 ask you that you would prayerfully consider tonight sowing some businessmen. Uh, you can begin to hear God and what He'd have you give, and you can help us with the finances of this crusade in a mighty way and push us forward into the harvest to see many that without um, without the word going forth from the crusades would not hear salvation. Sometimes we think, well, they can just go to a church. Well, there are places that we're going that there's not even a church within miles from those places. And some of them will never dawn the doors of a church, but they'll hear the open air message and they'll receive salvation. And it's a quest for souls. And so I ask you to help us create this net that we can cast in, um, in the nations of the earth to see souls come in. Ask the Lord what he had have you sow. There's some of you that can sow on here. Thousands, some of you can sow more. Some of you are can become monthly partners of Destiny Encounters and really help us in a tremendous way. See um, these crusades go forth, and we can even double and triple our efforts. You know, I would love to do more crusades, and I was talking to my our, our director Darcy and uh, Brenda, and I, and, and, and you know, I said this is our passion. Brennan and I's passion is obviously training and equipping others to do the work of the ministry but in and, and, and seeing miracles, but soul winning a crusade evangelism is something that's burned in me and God has given me a mandate for it. And so we're, we're going for it, and we have many crusades lined up for 2025, but we need to see the finances come in on this crusade for Uganda. So please, tonight, prayerfully consider helping us. If you, you have seen the fruit of this ministry, you know what we're doing in the nations of the earth, and we're going to be putting up some things in the coming weeks on Nepal. And you'll see the power of the Lord moving, deliverances happening, people coming to Christ, um, Buddhists, Hindus. And some of these places that we're going into, um, there's no crusades. They're just not happening. They're not doing crusades. Uh, but the thing that I was so encouraged by when we went to Nepal is that they said, the, Brother Charlie, the, the churches are thriving and they are they are being... Uh, impacted by these crusades that you're doing, the last one, so, so powerful. You know, the government tried to, you know, the, some extreme people tried to shut us down. But God's glory moved forward, and we saw the victory of Christ during those four days. Nothing can stop the move of God. But we thank you for prayerfully considering sowing tonight. You heard the word of restoration. Now I'm asking you to attach a seed with that word and saying, Brother Charlie, I'm coming into contact with the word, but I'm also sowing into souls. I'm sowing into the ministry of Destiny Encounters because I believe in what you are doing. I believe in what this ministry is doing, and I want to be a part of it. We thank you so, so much. In the description box of the video, there is a tab right there where you can sow and you can give. Listen, there are so many scammers out there as well. Do not go to anybody that says that they work for the ministry, to another email, nothing. There is only one place that you can give. It's on destinyencounters.com. It's underneath uh, the donate tab. That And there's different ways that you can give. You can become a partner of the ministry, but there is only one way to sow and one way to give, and it's on that website. It is secure. It is the way to give, okay? So, guys, I love you so much. Listen, 
really consider sowing tonight. We would like to just see the, all of that finances coming in. And of course, we're sending um, our crusade director to other places because we're looking at the fall, another location. Um, I don't want to get into too many details, but one country shut us down. They, the government, the president, they would not let us into the nation. And so we're actively working uh, to uh, move into a certain place um, in, in, um, in the fall. So I'll be giving some updates on that because we were supposed to be going uh, to a nation in the month of April, but the government stepped in and said, you're not coming. We shut you down. And you know, um, God will handle that. But we're moving forward. We're believing God for this Uganda crusade, fully paid. And then in the fall, we have, we're looking towards another place that we're going to be going. Listen, we love you guys. We thank you for your support of this ministry. Some of you have been supporting the ministry for years. Your financial support of $25, $50, $100 a month, that is significant and is helping us to see people change and transformed around the world. Listen, I love you. Bryn loves you. And we are always praying for you. If you have a prayer request, prayer at destinyencounters.com is where you can get that in. We pray Monday through Friday, 5 to 10. And on Thursday, we fast and we pray 24 hours right here at the center. You can come and join us if you'd like, but also our prayer team, our leaders, my God, they are fire-filled, Holy Ghost baptized, and they're praying over your prayer requests. I'm praying over your prayer requests, and we know we're going to see some breakthrough in every area of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, I feel the Spirit of God on this broadcast tonight. Listen, get your prayer requests in. Sow a seed. And remember, Jesus is King. Guys, we love you. God bless. Bye-bye.